What would you do if you were asked the following? Find the Cartesian form of z equals 2 pi cos of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine of 2 pi over 3. Note that this time we are given the polar form, which is in general r pi cos of theta plus i sine of theta, and we want to go the Cartesian form, which is simply x plus y i. Do you know how to do that? Just think about, can you write x and y in terms of both the modulus and the angle? You're probably wondering how to do it, but we have already done it. Just remember what we did when defining the polar form of a complex number. And I'm just going to refresh it a bit. Remember that when defining the polar form of a complex number, we were thinking about writing x in terms of theta and r, and then we were thinking about doing the same for y. Just remember that the trigonometric ratio that relates x, theta, and r is cos of theta, since x is the adjacent side. Therefore, cos of theta is x over r, and then if we want to get x by itself, we just need to multiply across by r, and that gives us x is equal r cos of theta. Similarly, we can do it with y. So now, can you relate y, r, and theta? If you think about y, y is the opposite side. Therefore, y, r, and theta are related through sine. So sine of theta will be y over r, and then multiplying across by r, we get that y is equal to r sine of theta. That's what you're going to need if you want to go from the polar form to the Cartesian form to get your x and your y. So we will continue with the example we were given. Remember that we have x is equal to r cos of theta, and then we have y is equal to r sine of theta. Therefore, if we place r by 2, which is the modulus here, just remember the form r cos of theta plus i sine of theta, then r is 2, and theta is 2 pi over 3. So theta is 2 pi over 3, and then x is going to be 2 by cos of 2 pi over 3. Now, for doing cos of 2 pi over 3, you can either use your calculator or you can also use the log tables and look for cos of pi over 3 and then remember the sign of the trigonometric ratios in the different quadrants. In any of the ways, you should get that cos of 2 pi over 3 is minus a half. Remember, it's minus because it is in the second quadrant. So we have 2 by minus a half which is equal to minus 1. So that is our x. If we do the same for y, then we have y is equal to 2 by sine of 2 pi over 3. And then again, you can use the log tables with pi over 3 and then add the appropriate sign, or you can use a calculator. In any of the cases, you will get that sine of 2 pi over 3 is simply the square root of 3 over 2. And then that gives that y is equal to 2 by the square root of 3 over 2. If you cancel the 2's, then you get that is the same as the square root of 3. Then y is the square root of 3. Now, if you remember the Cartesian form, is given by z is equal x plus y i. Therefore, in our case, since x is minus 1, we will have minus 1 plus y, which is the square root of 3 i. And then the Cartesian form of the polar form that we were given is z is equal to minus 1 plus the square root of 3 i. Just note that this is precisely one of the questions that I asked you in the previous video, that I asked you to convert from Cartesian to polar. So 
so he 